Okay. Um, good evening. And Hi there. Um, welcome to the Stearns County Board of Adjustments meeting for April 22nd. Um, the first item on our agenda is the um, Pledge of Allegiance, if we all could join. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first on our agenda will be to do just do a roll call. Um, Jason Crone will not be with us this evening. Um, so I'll do roll call. Jill? Here. Mike? Here. Dennis? Here. Dave? Here. And Jacob? Here. All right, sounds good. Um, I just have a couple of announcements to make before we begin the meeting. In response to COVID-19, we're pausing for just one moment. We have a technical issue, I believe. Okay, we resolved our technical issue and we have already completed the pledge and now we will just have a couple of announcements before we begin the official part of the meeting. In response to COVID-19 and pursuant to Minnesota Statute Ch Chapter 12 relating to emergency management, Governor Wallace has declared a state of the emergency. In response to the state of emergency and in accordance with Minnesota Statute Chapter 13D.021, <clears throat> the Board of Adjustments members and the applicant may participate by telephone or other electronic means. And the meeting will be broadcast live um, on meetings on demand on the county website. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> members of the Board of Adjustment are appointed by the County Board of Commissioners with one member from each of the five commissioner districts, one member at large, and one member appointed by the Planning Commission. I'll give a brief overview of how our meetings will go this evening. Um, I will read the variance request and that will open the public hearing for each individual request. Uh, then the, app, the staff will be asked to, be give, to give an overview of the application and then uh, we can hear from the applicant or the representative and we ask that you state your name and your address for the record as all of our testimony this evening is being tape recorded for the record. Uh, environmental Services will provide a brief overview of the request um, and any correspondence that has been received regarding this request. Um, the applicant or their representative can then give their input or their concerns. Once the applicant or the representative is finished with their testimony, then the board will discuss the matter and ask questions of staff and the applicant. Upon completing the board's questions, um, 
then um, if we do not have any additional statements from any audience members um, via um, telephone or online, um, we will close the public hearing. Once the public hearing is closed, there'll be no further input from the um, applicant, environmental services, unless the chair or one of the board members wants some type of clarification. And once the public hearing is closed, then we will do a series of um, questions called the findings of fact, which are based on um, state law and county ordinance. And following the answers to those questions will lead us to making our decision to either grant or deny the request. The first regular item on our agenda this evening is the approval of the March 22nd um, 2021 meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve? So move, Dennis. We have a motion from Dennis. Do we have a second? Second, Dave Gamrod. And all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm also aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. The minutes for the 22nd meeting are approved. Our next item is to approve the minutes for the March 25th meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved, Dennis. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that, Jacob Hawk. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, um, the minutes for the March 25th meeting are approved. Our first regular item is to consider a request from James and Ann Gallison, Revocable Trust, Kimball, Minnesota, from Section 6.2.1A and F of the Stearns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to construct a residential accessory structure on a property which is 0.5 to 0.99 acres in the Shoreland Overlay District in excess of the allowed maximum building area, the sidewall height and building height. The said ordinance allows for a maximum accessory building area of 1,200 square feet, a sidewall height of 10 feet, and building height of 16 feet on a property that is half an acre to 0.99 acres in size. The affected property is lot one, less the easterly 82 and a half feet of the first addition to Pearl Lake Park, section two, track 122 North, range 29 West of Main Prairie Township, and the property address is 19455 East Shore Drive, Kimball, Minnesota. And with us this evening, um, are the Gallisons with us? Uh, yes, we are here. All right, we'll be back to you in just a couple minutes for your okay. input. Uh, if staff could give us their input, please. Sure. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, applicants. A uh, little bit of background on, on the request. The applicants own lot six of block two of Pearl Lake Park, and that lot has their residential dwelling unit and a 20 by 24 detached garage on it per our county assessor's records. They purchased that lot in November of 2006. The lot is approximately half an acre in size and the sewage treatment system dispersal area for that lot and the dwelling is located on the subject lot that we're talking about tonight. So the subject lot is lot one, uh, and that's the first edition Pearl Lake Park. And they purchased that lot in June of 2018. This tract is approximately 0.93 acres, and it's within a A40 zoning district, but because it's less than five acres in size, the R1 setbacks and uses apply. The property is in the shoreland overlay of Pearl Lake, which is a recreational development lake. Um, 
and for a lot this size, you are allowed a accessory or cumulative accessory building area of 1,200 square feet with a 10-foot sidewall and overall building height of 16 feet. Uh, the applicants are proposing a 1,500 square foot building. So it's 300 square feet in excess of what's allowed and a two foot excess sidewall height and two and a half foot uh, building height excess. The property is in the shoreland overlay, as I said. Pearl Lake is on the impaired waters list for mercury and fish. An alternative to their request would be to propose a structure that would be equal to or less than the standards allowed by the ordinance. The impervious coverage on the lot is, is not a factor. The Main Prairie Township, uh, Sock River Watershed District, Pearl Lake Association, DNR, and property owners within 500 feet have been notified of the request. And I do not have any correspondence for this request, Madam Chair. Bonnie, you're muted. Thank you. Um, the applicant now, if you could share with us your thoughts. Hello. I, our, the, we're Jay and Kim Galazin. We live at 19455 East Shore Drive, Kimball, Minnesota, zip code 55353. I wrote a little something just to kind of tell you why we want to build this building. Uh, we intend to improve the look of the lot and provide safe and secure storage for our equipment, including watercraft, an enclosed trailer, and other lake-related items. Our research has found that using standard building sizes is the most cost-effective. Our proposal for a 30 by 50 by 12 fits a standard building profile and allows us enough ceiling height to store our enclosed trailer. Our enclosed trailer has eight foot sidewalls plus the tires and the height requires a 12 foot sided building so the garage door will be tall enough to allow entrance of the trailer. Our small garage near our home has very short ceilings and very short garage doors. It can accommodate small items like short kids, mowers, snow throwers and the like, cars not so much. Our home property does not have enough space to add a storage building uh, the building on the outlot provides both the space and the storage solution for us. Though we live in the country and crime is not super unheard of, uh, gas has been siphoned from vehicles left unsecured. Uh, throughout the community, people's trailers have been stolen, four-wheelers and other personal items. We want to protect our possessions and prevent vandalism and prevent temptation. Our property is triangular shaped. It's awkward. It has two significant roads adjacent to it forming a point. There are no neighbors on two of the sides and only one to the side. Those neighbors have erected a nice garage as they were victims of vandalism in the past. Our proposed building will not cause any visual impairment to the viewing of the lake or other properties. Putting up a building will improve the look of the lot. Unfortunately, people have used the property to dump garbage leaves etc. Investing in a building should prevent people from secretly trying to tr throw drunk onto our property, making it an eyesore for all. Currently, we have about a 20-yard roll-off of trash to get rid of. Making improvements to the, lots, to the lot will help with the overall appeal of the area and will improve property values. Our driveway will be less cluttered, which I can tell you we will have a new driver next year, and I don't want her to play pinball with the car and anything else that's parked in the driveway. We're not requesting a large, unsightly building. As you can see from the plans, it is an attractive building and would improve the overall appearance of the lot. It is tucked to one side, leaving the natural vegetation to prosper on the other side. Ultimately, we want the opportunity to protect and secure our property safely in a single location, simply requesting the parameters for the acre lot to be applied to a slightly less than an acre lot property. That's 
pretty much our story. Okay, thank you. Um, if we um, have any questions or comments from board members. Madam Chair, I have a question for staff. Um, does the current uh, structure that they have as an accessory structure, is that included as a part of the 1,200 square feet? Or can they have one building 1,200 square feet plus another accessory structure as well? They can have, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Member Hain, they can have a total of two buildings that would equal 1,200 square feet. So the combination of both of them could equal 1,200? Correct, unless it's 150 square feet or less in size. But the one they have is 20 by 24, so that's not... Oh, no, that's on their other lot. Oh, gotcha. That, so that's on the lot where we're talking about the whole parcel. We're talking specifically for this half acre parcel or? That is correct because that they're not contiguous. The road separates them. Okay, so then that does not apply to this lot. That is correct. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Madam Go Chair, ahead. Dennis Gregory, a uh, question for staff. Uh, while it's not directly pertinent to this uh, request, I am uh, interested in understanding the 2019 variance that was denied. Um, do you have uh, some of the fact pattern there? Um, Madam Chair, Member Gregory, uh, I looked at that variance proposal and it, it was more than double. They were asking for more than double of what was allowed. I don't have the specifics, but I, I do recall that they were, uh, they were asking for greater than double of what was allowed for that lot size. And that, that was my recollection. I didn't get a chance to go back in my files, but uh, th thank you. I think that's that's all I needed. Sure. Hey, other Chair. questions? Yes, go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Uh, my question is, is, is the survey on this lot accurate? Or sometimes uh, uh, you actually own the land, like uh, our county road, we own the land to the center line of the highway, and it counts as our acreage, but, uh, you know, I'm wondering, they're only seven-tenths of a acre short of having a 1,500-square-foot building, and I'm wondering if the, how accurate that survey is, if it's taking into consideration the distance to the center of the road, if they own it, or if it is not owned. Madam Chair, I can answer that. Go ahead. Uh, we This is not a certificate of survey. We A certificate of survey is not required for this request because the lot size is more than, than half of what the minimum is. Um, but we came up with the lot size basically using a, a mapping measuring tool on our mapping applications. Uh, and the right of way is not counted in the lot size. Okay, so they're actually their legal description of the lot could actually be over mm -hmm. uh, over one acre then. Over two, over two acres. Over yeah. It's, over two acres, yeah. Or yeah, up to two okay. acres. Yeah, these it could be up to. Madam Chair, the, again, the lots are separate. Um, and this lot, the subject lot that we're speaking of, is just shy of an acre. The The lot where the home is, is about a half an acre. These lots are not combined by ordinance. They're separate. Yeah, I'm just asking, you know, if the, the legal description of the lot is over, it could easily be over an acre depending on did the 
did the county buy the right of way to the land or was it kind of donated kind of like a lot of the roads were so i'm just saying is that they could easily be seven tenths of an acre more there than what you measured And that wouldn't necessarily be seven tenths; it'd be seven hundredths of an acre. Yeah, that's what I mean, seven hundredths. Hundredths yeah, of an true. acre, and they could get this size without without a request. Without a request, they could get it. That's why I'm wondering. I'm I'm questioning how accurate that measurement of that property is, especially when it's only uh, that small percentage point of. Uh, from being able to have that building with all the variance. Okay, are there other questions or comments from the board? Okay, hearing none, um, I believe we would be ready to close the public hearing. Is there a motion? So move. All right, we have a motion by Mike, I believe, um, to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second, Dennis. All right. Is anyone opposed to closing the public hearing? Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed and we'll move on to findings of fact. Madam Chair, I don't believe we were asked if we visit the site. Oh, I'm glad you reminded us. Um, I was there. Okay. All right. Mike was there. Um, Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. And I also visited the site. So question number one, the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located, yes or no? Madam Chair, the uh, zoning is R1 and accessory structures are allowed in as R1 zoned area. All right, we have a yes for number one. Does anyone disagree with yes? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, I just want to um, say it, it looks like it's actually A40 zoning district, but it's also R1 setbacks. Um, so I just want to clarify, I agree with um, that statement, but I just wanted to clarify that it's not necessarily all R1, it's also A40. All right, thank you for that notation. All right, does anyone disagree with yes for number one? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Um, number two, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, um, I believe that uh, yes, it is um, in harmony uh, because the lot size is 0.93, approximately 0.93, and what they're proposing to build would be allowed in a lot size that is one acre or larger. So they're really only talking about 0.07 of an acre acre difference between what's allowed and what isn't allowed. Um, as stated by staff, it wasn't necessarily actually surveyed. Um, in the packet it says approximately. I feel that because this property is right on the borderline of those two categories, um, that this is allowed. Um, it is, it's very close and it sounds like they're still trying to fit it into something that works for them, but that also fits the county's requirements. All right, we have a yes for number two. Does anyone disagree with yes? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number three, the variance will be consistent with the comprehensive plan, yes or no? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, yes, I think it is consistent with the comprehensive plan under living goals number two to manage the impacts of growth and development on the county's rural character and natural resources. Um, we are managing the impact of, of them building this, uh, this garage. It is in a neighborhood that has other garages on it. Um, 
and they are trying to keep it smaller, but still meet their needs. And we're just kind of right on that borderline. So yes, I think it is consistent. All right, we have a yes for number three. Does anyone disagree? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner, yes or no? Madam Chair, I believe it's reasonable to have an accessory structure uh, when you have a late place to keep and store your belongings. All right, we have a yes for number four. Anyone disagree? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Um, number five, the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, I believe that the property, it is this strange shape. It is a triangle shape. Um, and because of that, I think that's what's causing the property to be just on the smaller side of the of the requirements. So yes, I believe it is unique to the property. All right, anyone disagree with yes or have additional comments? Okay, hearing none, I'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number six, the variance if granted maintains the essential character of the locality. Um, I'm gonna say yes, it does um, maintain the character. Um, along that side of the road is mostly all sheds. Um, that area is heavily wooded, and so it's going to be blocked from view from primarily most of the year from both roads. Um, so I do think it's keeping in character of the locality. Does anyone disagree with yes for number six? Hearing none, I'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number seven, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dave Gamrat, economics weren't part of this discussion. All right, we have a yes for number seven. Anyone disagree? I will mark that as unanimous. Yes, we are now ready for a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I'd make a motion that we approve the applicant's request for a variance to construct a residential accessory structure that's 1,500 square feet in area with 12 foot sidewall height and 18 feet, six inch building height. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Madam Chair, Mike Kane, I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will do roll call on the remaining members. Um, Jill? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. And I'm also a yes. Um, so motion carries. Um, if you have more questions about your request, you can check with uh, environmental services staff during regular business hours via phone. Um, thank you for being with us this evening. All right, on to item number two on the agenda. To consider a request from Frank and Sandra um, Woletz of Okay, consider a request from Frank and Sandra Roulettes from Sartell, Minnesota, from sections 5.1.2C3 of the Stearns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to construct additions on an existing legal non-conforming principal structure located partially within the shore impact zone of Big Upper Spunk Lake. The said ordinance does not allow for additions or alterations to non-conforming structures located wholly or partly within the shore impact zone. The affected property are lots 31, 32, and 33 of Connaught's addition, section 33, track 125 north, range 30 west of Avon Township. And the property address is 32883 Spunk Tree Circle, Avon, Minnesota. And our applicants with us this evening? I guess we are. All right. All right, we'll be back to you in just a couple minutes. All right, first thing is we will do roll call to see um, who was able to visit the site. Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes, I uh, also spoke with Frank at the site to go over the project. All right, thank you. And Dave? Yes. 
Jake? Yes. And I also visited the site. Okay, if we could have um, staff do an overview for us. The applicants, oh, am I muted? No, okay. Uh, the applicants purchased property November of 2020. As you mentioned, Madam Chair, it's lots 31 through 33 of Connaught's edition. It was platted in 1905, obviously prior to any official controls. The property is located in an R1 zoning district and the lot size is just over half an acre per their sur submitted certificate of survey. A um, little bit about the existing conditions. So the existing house is approximately 1,296 square feet, and that was originally constructed in 1968. Um, those are per our county assessor's records. There are three bedrooms in the structure. There is an existing detached garage that was constructed in 1991, and that has a valid permit on record. And per their submitted certificate of survey, their home is 42.3 feet landward of the lake, and that is within the shore impact zone. There are no decks on the existing structure yet. Um, that was granted in February, as you may recall. And the existing lot coverage is 20.5%. So the applicants are proposing a 680.66 square foot uh, residential dwelling unit addition with a crawl space underneath. And that would, the nearest point would be just over 68 feet landward of the ordinary high water level and also a 24 by 24 attached garage. Uh, the additions do not include, include any new proposed bedrooms and the total lot coverage proposed after the project is completed would be 24.9%. Again, that's per their certificate of survey. Uh, the applicants, uh, as you remember in, in February, uh, they had an attic uh, slash dormer on the lake side of the dwelling on that proposal, and that has been removed uh, for this request. The property is located in the shoreland overlay, obviously, and it's a recreational development lake, again, R1 zoning. The property uh, does not have any flood hazard area. Upper Spunk Lake is on the impaired waters list for mercury and fish. The septic system that currently serves the dwelling is sized for three bedrooms. It was installed in 1976 and there is a, an existing uh, certificate of compliance that is valid. Uh, we do have an engineered stormwater plan. It was under review when I did this report, but uh, we do have uh, stormwater staff has given approval with conditions on that. The applicants uh, have reworked their plans to move the proposed additions out of the shore impact zone and at or behind the established building line from their initial request. Avon Township, the city of Avon, Avon Area Lakes, and DNR and property owners within 500 feet, excuse me, have been notified of the request. Um, recommended conditions were to be if the requests were granted, the department would recommend that an as-built survey is completed by June 1st of 2022 to ensure us that the impervious lot coverage does not exceed the, the allowed 25% threshold. And if granted, recommend the engineered stormwater plan be approved by the department prior to issuance of a construction site application and as I stated, we already have that approval. Uh, I do have one letter uh, of correspondence. It is from uh, Walter Beckers. 
and it says, David, the request to improve the property at 33883 Spunk Tree Circle on the shore of Upper Spunk Lake by Mr. and Mrs. Woolitz should not be denied. There is nothing that their improvements will do to the neighborhood that will affect anyone in this area except increase valuations. They're wanting to make the property their new home. We should not make their project more difficult and costly. Please allow them the right to proceed with their plans respectfully, Walter Beckers. And he's at 32920 and 32813 Spunk Tree Circle. And I'll return it to you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. All right, um, the applicants, um, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? Um, sorry, I was muted, Madam Chair. Um, so Frank and Sandra Woolitz were located at 1008 4th Street North, Sartell, Minnesota. Um, like Dave indicated, we do plan on making this our permanent residence. Um, so we would be moving to Avon. Um, I think uh, as I talked to Mike when he was at the property, I think we learned a lot um, from the last time we were in front of the board. And I think, um, I think with what we're requesting, um, fits a lot more with um, some some of the requirements. And I think we've worked pretty closely with with the depart with the um, environmental services to get their recommendations as well. Um, I think the new designs um, don't have any sightline issues. And the new addition is completely out of the shore impact zone. Uh, we've also removed the rear dormer that was on the initial plan to uh, make sure we weren't making any changes to the house that is in the shore impact zone. Um, and then uh, like what was recommended with the previous discussion, we have completed a storm water plan um, that has rain gardens um, on the north east side of the home and I think there's actually some secondary benefit to the neighbor there and that some of the water that that would run off from that would also be collected um, in some in that rain garden as well so um, and that's that's what we have thank you thank you all right thank you um, questions then from um, board members Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I have three questions for staff um, in no particular order. Uh, the uh, Environmental Services Department, when they did the uh, stormwater plan review and approved it, uh, one of their uh, items, item number two, uh, it talks about the boulder retaining wall is not authorized by the stormwater approval. Uh, is that an issue for the Wallaces? Um, or do we need to do something with that as far as a variance or if you could address that first and I'll ask my second and third questions after that. Sure. Uh, Madam Chair, Member Gregory. So the boulder wall that's shown on their certificate of survey, um, that's not a part of this request uh, and it would not be addressed under a potential construction site permit either. So that's going to be a separate permit entirely from the variance request and a construction site permit. So it would it would require a shoreland alteration permit to construct the wall. And so that's going to be uh, an entirely different process for the Wallaces. Okay, very good. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure if uh, we were to address it that we would do so. Uh, and then, so there's also, you know, uh, items one through six other than two uh, on there that are conditions. Um, if we were to approve this variance, do we need to deal with those conditions? Uh, or is that, again, something that they just need to uh, comply with uh, separately from the Board of Adjustments uh, process? Um, Madam Chair, uh, Member Gregory, these these are conditions that would essentially be followed up on with the construction site permit. Okay. Um, so the board here tonight doesn't doesn't have to address these conditions that were put on the stormwater plan. It'll be followed up on with the the construction permit itself. Okay. Good. Thank you. And last question is. 
uh, they have a proposed deck, and I didn't see that in the variance request. Uh, is the uh, proposed deck um, uh, compliant, I guess, for lack of a better word? Um, Madam Chair, Ms. Member Gregory, once again, the the, uh, the board granted approval of that deck back in February. I forgot. The, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, with the condition um, of of an approved stormwater plan, which uh, the Woolitzes now have. So that, that has already been approved. That's the trouble with getting dozens of these requests. We, <laughs> it's hard to keep track. All right, thank you very much. Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, board, other board members that have questions? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, question for staff. On the image that's currently showing the proposed conditions, there's a big line that goes all the way through. Um, what is that line? Is that the is that the housing line? Is that the shoreland impact zone? What is that line? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Member DeLong, that is, indicates the, the building line between the two neighboring the adjacent homes. So that's that is the building line. If if the hypothetically if the current home was behind that line and they were proposing these additions, they wouldn't need to come before the board. Um, it's just that their existing home is within the shore impact zone that therefore requiring the variance. Thank you. So it sounded like from the applicants that they tried to move the addition behind the short impact zone. So is that also that line or can we see on the map where that shore impact zone line is, please? Uh, Madam Chair, Member Duong, the, uh, the shore impact zone is not indicated on the certificate of survey. Uh, I guess what I would point out is that the northwest lakeside corner of the home is at 42.3 feet. So 7.7 uh, .7 feet behind that would be the shore impact zone. But it's, it's not indicated on the certificate of survey. Okay, thank you. Um, other questions? Okay, hearing no other questions, um, <clears throat> we are ready to close the public hearing and move on to findings of fact. Do I have a motion? Dave Gamera, okay, Dave, you're making a motion? Yes. All right, a motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second, Dennis. All right, thank you, Dennis. Is anyone opposed to closing the public hearing? Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed and we'll move on to findings. The, per the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located, yes or no? Madam Chair, Mike Haynes, R1 zoned and additions are approved under R1 zoning. All right, we have a yes for number one. Anyone disagree with yes? All right, number two, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls and any related ordinances, yes or no? Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I think the applicants have uh, taken the steps to, uh, you know, preserve the water quality through uh, the stormwater plan. Uh, they've also moved the additions as far away from the uh, lake as they can. Uh, reasonably can. And so I think in both cases, uh, that is in harmony with the uh, controls. All right, we have a yes for number two. Anyone disagree? Hearing none, we'll make that unanimous. Chair? Yes. yes, go ahead, Jill. Jill DeLong, um, I'm going to say that no, it's not in harmony. Um, the existing controls say that uh, we should not allow any additions or alterations to non-conforming structures, and that this is a non-conforming structure. So um, by allowing an addition or alteration, um, that's going against the general purposes of the controls. So I'm going to say no. 
All right, since we have a split vote on this, we'll do a roll call. So we have a yes from Dennis, a no from Jill, and I'll do roll call for the rest of the members. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. And I'm also a yes. So we have um, five yeses and one no. Number three, the variance will be consistent with the comprehensive plan, yes or no? Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, I would uh, point out Lakeshore living policies, uh, number one, uh, limit the impacts of the additional shoreland development uh, by moving the housing away from shorelines. I realize uh, that's a little bit different than this case, but but still I think applicable. Uh, and also encourage, short, number two is encourage shoreland protection and restoration methods, such as vegetative buffers. Uh, in this case, the applicants are using a rain garden and, and I'd also say on this lot that the building envelope uh, is extremely narrow. Um, so there's really nothing uh, that could ever be built on this lot that would actually meet uh, all of the setbacks. And so uh, I, I think it is, uh, I would point to those two, but I think there are others uh, that would be applicable as well. All right, we have a yes for number three. Um, does anyone disagree with yes for number three? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, I'm going to say no under Lakeshore Living Policies number three to discourage the alteration of natural shorelands and the creation of impervious surface in near shore areas. All right, since we have a split um, comments, we will do roll call on the remainder. And um, we have a yes on Dennis and no on Jill. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. And I'm also a yes. So we have um, five yeses, one no for number three. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner, yes or no? Madam Chair, Mike Hain, um, I believe it's reasonable to want to put the addition and the attached garage on uh, based on the fact that this will be a permanent house and not just a lakeshore cabin. All right, we have a yes for number four. Does anyone disagree with that? Okay, hearing none, I'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number five, the plight of the landowner is due to the circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, the placement of the original uh, residential structure uh, is what's uh, causing the issue here. Uh, again, the applicants uh, figured out a solution that worked for them and also didn't destroy the sight lines in the uh, neighborhood. All right, we have a yes for number five. Does anyone disagree? Mark that as unanimous, yes. Um, number six, the variance if granted maintains the essential character of the locality. Madam Chair, I don't believe the uh, character of the neighborhood will change by adding an addition to this house. All right, um, so we have a yes for number six. Um, does anyone disagree with yes for six? Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous. Number seven, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations. I don't believe that um, economics were, um, you know, part of this discussion. So I'm going to say yes. Does anyone disagree with yes for number seven? Okay, hearing none, um, we are now ready for a motion. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I would make a motion that we approve the applicant's request for a variance uh, to construct uh, two additions onto an existing legal non-conforming principal structure. Uh, those two additions are a 680.66 foot residential dwelling unit addition with crawl space underneath and a 24 by 24, 576 foot uh, attached garage uh, with one condition. And that condition is that the applicants uh, uh, would be required to get an as-built survey completed by June 1st, 
2022 uh, to ensure that the impervious lot coverage does not exceed the 25% threshold. All right, we have a motion with one um, condition made Madam by Chair Dennis. McCain, I'll second that with the All condition. Right. And we have a second. I'll do roll Madam, call on the. Madam yes. Chair, till the long, just a question. Do we need to mention the engineered stormwater plan to be included? Um, I believe that that was a requirement of the previous um, variance that we granted, and I believe it'll be on the construction site permit, um, but we could add it here. You know, it's, it's up to board members what they'd like to do. It, it uh, I'm happy to add it. Uh, so um, that the applicants need to have a engineered stormwater plan uh, that's approved by the uh, department prior to the issuance of a construction site application. All right, and um, Mike, are you amenable to that condition? Yes. As person seconding? All right, then we will do roll call for the remainder. Jill? No. Um, Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. And I am also a yes, um, so motion carries. Um, so your request has been approved. If you have additional questions, you can check with environmental services staff during regular business hours via telephone. And thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next item on the agenda is to consider an after the fact request from Michael and Bonnie Franta of Maple Grove, Minnesota from sections 10.2.11B1A of the Stearns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to leave as constructed the lowest floor in a single family residential dwelling unit not meeting the minimum required regulatory flood protection elevation. The said ordinance requires the lowest floor meet the minimum required um, flood protection elevation and the affected property is 0.98 acres of the government lot five south of the township road and the east four feet of lot one and the east four feet of outlet one of Bugby Edition, section 29, track 122 north, range 32 west of Painesville Township. And the property address is 29573 Crest Ridge Road, Painesville, Minnesota. And we will do a roll call to see who was able to visit the site. Um, Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes, and as a caveat, I live um, very close to the uh, residents here. And so uh, inadvertently, I had conversations with the next door neighbor, Paul Bugby, and one of the builders who had worked on their home was at the uh, Paul Bugby's place that he was working on. So I did hear a little bit of a background of the construction of this, and I figured it would probably be important just to at least disclose that part of it. So, all right. And I also was um, at the site um, and kind of got there right in the middle of the baby of the show, baby shower, I believe it was, or bridal shower. Uh, but um, so I did have a conversation with the owner as to um, the nature of the request. So um, if staff could give us their report. Sure, the applicant's own uh, legal non-conforming track of record. It's approximately 0.98 acres in area, just shy of an acre, obviously. They purchased the property in January of 2016, um, but the property has been in the family since the year 2000. The applicants uh, obtain a construction site permit to replace the existing residential dwelling with a new dwelling in May of 2017. And then uh, a requirement of that construction site permit was to have the, the low floor elevation of the structure certified by a licensed individual. Uh, the surveyor, O'Malley and Crone Land Surveyors, did certify the low floor elevation in February of 2019 and uh, found that it was 3.48 inches below that 
required regulatory flood protection elevation. Uh, we do have notes on the parcel that there was discussion between staff and the building contractor about the floodplain standards uh, and you know the requirements of that low floor elevation. So there there was discussion between the department and the contractor on that. Property is within the shoreland overlay uh, of Lake Coronas. That's an R1 zoning district. Very teeny tiny portion of the dwelling is actually within the map floodplain and that's questionable with the mapping overlays that it could very well be out. But Lake Coronas is on the impaired waters list and that's because of mercury and fish. The um, sewage treatment system on the property is compliant. Uh, there was a certification done in March of this year. And the only alternative to this would be to raise the entire foundation of the house to 3.48 inches to the required RFP. Painesville Township, the City of Painesville, DNR, Coronas Lake Association, the North Fork of the Crow River Watershed District, and property owners within 500 feet were notified of the request. Uh, and I did send the board an electronic message this morning from a neighbor, and that, that was Paul Bugby, the resort owner. Um, and I'll just summarize in saying that uh, he is offering his support and feels that the request should be granted. And with that, Madam Chair, I will return it to you. Okay, thank you. All right, if we can hear from the applicants, um, any comments they might have? Thank you, Madam Chair. This is uh, Mike and Bonnie Franta. Um, the address is 18330 Thurry Hill Lane North in Maple Grove, Minnesota 55311. Um, just a little bit of background. We actually purchased the property in 1998. Um, and then we purchased uh, with uh, owned it with my uh, with my brother, and then bought my brother out in um, 2016. Uh, there was a fire in the property, electronic fire, in December of 2016 that burned the previous cabin or the original cabin that we purchased to to the ground, and so a rebuild was started um, in late summer, early fall of 2017. We contracted with. Mike Arnold Construction, who has done many of the uh, buildings of, around and homes around the uh, around Lake Coronas, including doing a lot of construction for Paul Bugby. Um, the the lake home was completed in, um, I'd say, late spring, early summer of 2018. As was earlier talked about, a new septic system was put in and was recently certified along with the along with a new well and um, I'm not, I don't have a good answer for how this is approximately three and a half inches below the regulatory flood protection elevation. Jake, maybe uh, you got a better answer from, from Mike Arnold and talking with him about it. I, I, I don't have any, any good answer on it, but it would be um, cost prohibitive to attempt to raise the entire foundation for the structure. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, questions or comments from um, board members? Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, a question for uh, staff, and it's not directly related to this application, although in general, um, we've had uh, several RFPE issues come before this board, and uh, we've talked before about getting a certification uh, based on the building plans uh, so that we could avoid this issue. Uh, has that been taken anywhere so that uh, we don't keep getting these repeat uh, variance requests? Uh, Madam Chair, Member Gregory, uh, I, there's been some, some brief internal discussion. Uh, Nothing's been acted on as of yet, of course. I, 
I think this is a bit of an anomaly to see three of these in a matter of two or three months. Um, I've been here for 20 years, and I've, I only recall one other such request. Um, and, and so I don't know uh, what the answer is in terms of, of, you know, making sure that these foundations are at the required elevation other than the contractor doing their due diligence to have that, uh, have that shot prior to putting a foundation in place. Um, but, it, you know, to answer your question in short, there hasn't been any change in protocol in terms of how we can fix this type of issue. Okay, thank you. And uh, again, I would just encourage us to, uh, I, I appreciate the uh, comment about these are rare, but uh, we've had a number of them. And, and so certainly would encourage us to, uh, to, to figure out because it puts the uh, homeowner uh, in a bad position, uh, potentially the contractor uh, and certainly us as a board. Um, the other thing that I would, and Madam Chair, just one other comment, and that is uh, most of this uh, residence is in the 500 year floodplain, uh, which gives us a 0.2% chance. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I can use biblical references here, but, you know, when Noah is, uh, you know, uh, going by my window, uh, you know, maybe this will be a problem for this house. But... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other comments or questions? I just have one question for staff. It appears that the um, the report from the surveyor was done in February of 2019, and we're now in April of 2021. Um, any any reason why it would take two years for it to to you know get this far as far as coming to the board? Uh, Madam Chair, I guess that might be a better question for the applicant and owner of the property. Um, I'm guessing we uh, probably had to chase after this and send letters to to get the information, but uh, maybe the applicant can better answer that. Can't the yeah, applicant? Be, yeah, Go yeah, ahead. I'd, yeah, I'd be happy to. We we did get a letter in um, 2020, 20, no, I'm sorry, 2019, um, at which time we contacted the builder and said um what exactly do we do about this actually when we when we got the when we got the original letter we hadn't surveyed we hadn't gotten a survey certification on this and so we sent the surveyor out um and did that i think and and the results came back as they were and talked to the builder about you know what action we should take and quite honestly um forgot about um, the fact that it, that existed got a letter again this year, which was a reminder. And then I I called the uh, environmental service team. So, okay, thank you for that background. Uh, do we have other questions from the board? Okay, hearing none. Um, do we have a uh, motion to close the public hearing? I can so move. Okay, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second, Dennis. Okay, is there anyone opposed to closing the public hearing? Hearing none, um, the public hearing is now closed and we'll begin with um, findings of fact. And for those listening in, um, the questions are slightly different from the previous applications because this is an after the fact request. Number one, is the proposed use allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located? Madam Chair, it's R1 zone district. Residential structures are allowed to be built in R1 zoned area. All right, we have a yes for number one. Anyone disagree? 
Hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number two, um, is the variance in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls? Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, we're talking about uh, three and a half inches here. And uh, we're also talking about a 500 year floodplain with a 0.2% chance of occurring. Uh, and with all the water controls now, I think that's even uh, more remote than that. So really it is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the uh, controls. All right, we have a yes for number two. Anyone disagree with that? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, um, I, I would like to say I'm also a yes. Um, I believe that with current weather conditions, a 500 year flood might be closer in our future. Um, but I also want to state that uh, in considering the after the fact variance request, the number or the letter E, are the county's benefits outweighed by the applicant's burden if the applicant were required to comply with the ordinance? I believe that requiring the applicant to raise the entire building by three inches would be uh, entirely outweigh the county's benefits. So that's why I am also a yes on number two. All right. Um, so we have two yeses on number two. Um, anyone disagree with yes for number two? Okay, hearing none, we'll make that unanimous. Um, number three, is the variance request consistent with the comprehensive plan? Madam Chair McCain, I believe under living goals number three, support housing options that give people in all life stages and economic means viable choices for safe, stable, and affordable homes. Um, I think this fits that characteristic. All right, we have a yes for number three. Anyone disagree? Hearing none, we'll mark it as unanimous. Number four, is the property owner proposing to use the property in a reasonable manner not permitted by the official controls. Well, I would say that it is reasonable to want to use your home, um, even though it is three and a half inches off, um, off the required, it's, it's a reasonable um, to use it with that minimal dis difference. We have one yes or number four. Anyone disagree? Number, f we'll mark that as unanimous. Yes. Number five, um, the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, I believe the issue um, was either the, the surveyor or the contractor when they constructed the house. Um, they were off on their calculations apparently by three and a half inches. So I believe it's due to the nature of someone else and not the homeowner himself. All right, we have a yes for number five. Anyone disagree? I'll mark that as unanimous yes. Number six, will the variance maintain the essential character of the locality? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, the variance will not change the essential character of the locality. We have a yes for number six. Anyone disagree? Okay, hearing none, we are now ready for a motion. Uh, do you have oh, excuse me, we're missing one cent, one question on the back. Um, number seven, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations. I think, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, economics is certainly a factor here, uh, but I think the uh, need for the variance uh, is more than economic considerations. It's uh, complying, uh, as Member Haynes said, uh, due to the contractor or surveyor's uh, issues, it's complying with the RFPE, uh, I think is the greater issue here than economics. And I'd also mention that, yes, economics were a significant part of this, but as um, item E on the, on the um, top of the page states um, that the burden to the applicant would not be um, of any benefit to the county. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have yeses for number seven. Anyone disagree with that? All right, hearing none, we would um, be ready for a motion. 
And Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I'd make a motion that we approve the applicant's uh, request for a variance to leave as constructed uh, the lowest floor in a single family residential dwelling unit, which is uh, 0.29 feet or 3.48 inches below the RFPE. All right, do we have a second? Yeah, this is uh, Jake Hawk, I'll second that. All right, and we'll do roll call on the remaining members. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. And I am also a yes. So motion carries. Um, if you have additional questions about your application, you can check with um, environmental services staff um, during res regular business hours via telephone. And thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you. All right, our next item on the agenda is to consider a request from Jason Lee and Christy Waring of Clear Lake, Minnesota from sections 10.2.11B1A of the Stearns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to construct the low floor crawl space in a new single family residential dwelling unit not meeting the minimum required water or high water elevation. The said ordinance requires the lowest floor to be at a level of at least three feet from the highest known water level. The affected property is Lot 5, Block 1 of East Lakeside Farm Addition, Section 1, Track 121 North, Range 29 West of Main Prairie Township. And the property address is 7562 of Lakeside Farm Road, um, South Haven, Minnesota. And... Um, is the applicant with us? Is Mike or Bonnie Fanta with us this evening? No. Uh, this is this is Christy and Jason. We're here. Yeah. Out. Oh. Video. Oh, excuse oh, me. Can, I'm on can you see us or hear us now? Yes. Yes, yes we can. I'm sorry. I had the my list no. here with the wrong name. <laughs> so, Jake. Um, Jason Madam Lee Chair, and Madam Christy Chair. Waring. Thank you. Hi, Madam. Good evening, Madam Chair and, and board members. My name is Jason Lee. This is my fiance, Christy Waring. I live at 6574 108th Avenue, and that's in Clear Lake, Minnesota, 55315. Okay. All right. Thank you. And um, we'll be back with you in just a couple minutes. Okay. Um, we'll do roll call on those that were able to visit the site. Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes, and I also spoke with Jason while I was at the site. Um, Dave? Yes, and I also spoke with Jason. Hey, Jake? Yep. And I also visited the site. All right, if we could have an overview from staff, please. Uh, applicants purchased lot five, block one of East, Light, East Lakeside Farm Edition uh, back in June of 2019. The plat was done in 1999, and it is a lot uh, a conforming tract of record with about 2.43 acres in total area. The property is located on School Section Lake, which is classified as a natural environment lake, and therefore the structural setback requirement is a minimum 200 feet. Um, in 1999, the developer of the property did request a variance on behalf of an interested party to build a new residential dwelling 155 feet from the lake, basically on the top of the bluff on the property. That request was denied. Uh, today, uh, Jason and Christy are proposing to construct a modular style home with an attached garage, uh, 3,769 square feet in total area. This would have a four foot crawl space underneath the home, which would accommodate the utilities. The proposed location will meet the required structural setbacks. However, their low floor, the crawl space, will not meet the required high water elevation for 
uh, the listed elevation for school section lake. The proposed low floor elevation of the crawl space is 1137.40 and the minimum required is 1141.47. Um, and so uh, the property is of course in the shoreland overlay and it's R1 zoning. There is not any map floodplain on this property and school section lake is not on the impaired waters list. A septic system design has been submitted, completed by a licensed designer, and that has been approved pending approval of a construction permit for a dwelling. The alternative to the request would be to raise the low floor, again the crawl space, to meet or exceed the required elevation. Main Prairie Township, the City of Kimball, Minnesota DNR, Clearwater River Watershed District, and owners within 500 feet have been notified of the request. And I do have correspondence. Um, I have correspondence from the DNR area hydrologist, and I got a message from her on Friday, March 19th, from Nicola Blake Bradley. And she said, after reviewing the attachments, I have no concerns with this variance request. A possible way of avoiding a variance that was not discussed is creating a retaining wall to reduce the amount of fill that is necessary downslope towards the wetland. DNR is not requiring such a change, but merely pointing out another option that might avoid the need for a variance. Thank you for the opportunity to review and comment on the request regards Nikki. And I do have correspondence uh, from a neighbor. It says, Dear Mr. Nett and the Stearns County Board of Adjustment, on behalf of my wife and myself, we would like to urge you to approve Jason and Christie's request and allow them to construct their home as they have outlined in their application for variance. We believe the request is reasonable and appreciate the lengths they have gone to try and preserve the natural beauty of the property. Please do not delay in approving their application for variance. Sincerely, Robert and Penny Blanchard, and they're at 7900 137th Street, Kimball, Minnesota. And Madam Chair, that is all I have. Okay, thank you. And um, if the applicants have any comments they'd like to share with us at this time. Yes, um, just to kind of bring us to what brought us to this variance request. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, yeah, we purchased the property about two years ago in all intents on trying to uh, build our home on there, um, permanent home. Uh, it's a very, very unique property. I believe anyone that's been out there understands the uniqueness of it. Um, we've learned a lot. Uh, prior to purchasing this property, we had the previous owners do a survey of the property to, and that's when we learned of this elevation requirement. Prior to purchasing, it, we spoke with, we physically went into to, uh, environmental services and it's our fault. We don't recall who we spoke to at this time, but we, at that time, two years ago, we were told your main floor of your house could be at that elevation of 1141.40, but um, you could not have a basement beneath that or any sort of uh, usable living space, but you could have a crawl space that is non-usable, that is part of your foundation below that level. I wish we would have wrote this person's name down. We did it. We just, uh, in good faith, took that two years ago. A year and a half ago, we started this process and was two days away from closing on our construction loan um, when we learned we had to purchase wetland credits to put the driveway in. Where the current driveway is now, uh, I'm sure you guys notice, is kind of new. Um, there was no driveway there before and the pond had come up over a very shallow driveway. Um, 
So we went through that process, which was a 10 month process uh, of purchasing wetland credits and getting approved to do that to bring our driveway up. All said and done, and with this being said, I mean, we, we bought this property that was sold as accessible, buildable property that's not in a floodplain. Um, and it seems like we've been hit with every roadblock possible um, just to get to this point two years later. Uh, fast forward, we we uh, came up with a house plan to to keep with with the uh, beautiful nature of the property. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous property, and it has been worth it. Uh, minus the the sh lots of tears shed and sleepless nights to get to this point. Um, but we 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 closed on our construction loan. We put our money down on our house and uh, got the house ordered. In the process of getting our building permit, we learned through Heidi that that crawl space could not be below the 1141, which we were absolutely devastated. We never would have went this far without obviously somewhere being told that we could, but that's neither here nor there, I guess. Um, so she said, your option is to request an variance for your crawl space. Now keep in mind this crawl space does not have any appliances in it. All the appliances will be on the main floor. The crawl space is strictly for accessing and hooking up appliances attached underneath the main floor. Electric and, Electric and plumbing. Um, so your furnace, water heater, water softener, all that is up on the main floor. The crawl space is uh, tiled, waterproofed, uh, sump pump, vapor barrier. So just, you know, we're doing everything, you know, up to cold and, and correct. And uh, it's just literally to access and hook up, do your hookups. Once we learned of the amount of fill that needs to be brought in, um, which is a lot, I'm sure if you guys been out there, even at our request, it is a lot. We're talking four to eight feet of fill is going to need to be brought in, even if we're granted this. We were suggested to talk to Nicola Black, the DNR hydrologist. We spoke with her on the phone for over an hour. But she had to say, just almost put us to tears because we have been trying to say this to environmental services for two years. I know this is hearsay, but you can see she's at least on board with us. Um, she wrote, uh, she the first thing she said is she, she didn't quite understand why our particular property had this ordinance due to the fact there's a 75 foot ridge between our house where we're building and the lake that runs along the whole east side of the lake. In addition to that, she stated, there is a water relief, high water relief dam put in in the early 80s that um, relieves any high water. The, she said the lake is no longer landlocked. There is a dam there now and that she could never foresee, and that was her words, I can never foresee that lake level ever getting even close to your house. And if it did, it would be up over the tar road of the cul-de-sac. I said, can you please come to the meeting and say this for with, to the members? I, she said, the board knows when we don't show up to a meeting that we are fine we're with the variance. She said, but what I will do for you, copy me on your application and I will make some comment on there. And she did. So I thank her for that at least. Um, Bringing us up to, out there, initially, all along, we didn't understand why we couldn't bring the house level down to that 1137 and have the crawl space down to 1133.40, which would be four feet lower than what we were currently asking. Um, and that's what we originally wanted to do, but we were told by a couple of different members at Environmental Services, we probably wouldn't get that request and to ask for the bare minimum if you want this to get approved. So that's where we come in at them numbers of 1137 to have our crawl space at. 
Um, we've had the pleasure of meeting Mike and uh, Dave at the land on Sunday. We were out there doing some work and they happened to come out there to look at everything. I'm sure they'll they'll mention this. They both kind of questioned us too. Why, you know, that's still a lot of fill to be brought in. And there's, there's a uh, string line there of where the house floor would be and you can see there are there's areas where it's going to be eight feet of fill need to be brought in. Um, they asked why didn't you have the house down down to the, you know, or request to have in your application down to the 1133 for your floor of the crawl space. I said because we honestly didn't think we would get approved. We're told we probably wouldn't just ask for the bare minimum. Um, one of the members mentioned if it was our property he said talk to dave net maybe reschedule this meeting because i think it's going to be beneficial to the property the look of the property the na the natural nature beauty of the property to not have to bring in that much fill even at our requested variance and i said i totally agree i think it's going to look a little it's going to look forced even at that elevation um and it's going to be tough the excavator said even at this elevation it's gonna to be tough to get that driveway it's gonna we're gonna to have to bring a lot of fill in way down the driveway to get up into the garage um decent but i said i will i'll reach out to dave i did reach out to dave next the, the following day and just mentioned this to him that a couple of members had brought that up he said maybe they're not aware of it but they do have the authority if they find it in the best interest of the land um to lower the numbers than what you are requesting um which i mean we are trying to preserve the natural beauty of the property by even having just a rambler ranch style house we pick the colors to match the 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 exterior woods and everything it's all browns and dark browns and cedar and um it's just so beautiful and um we're just we're trying to do what we can to preserve the, nat to natural, the natural beauty of this and after learning and talking to nicola black and getting her remarks i just i she doesn't feel that that uh, lake left the lake is no longer um an issue an issue at all and with a 70 foot ridge between us and the lake she uh um that just you know i actually could add tear in my eye because uh, finally someone understood what we were thinking but i i know i'm rambling i'm just emotional we've lost a lot of sleep in two years we've a lot of sh tears shed um it's just it's a beautiful property we're trying to preserve the natural beauty of it and uh whatever what I just thank you for listening to us and, and giving us this chance. If my fiance has anything to say, I'll have her say something. Yeah. That, no, that's good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, if we have additional questions, we'll come back to you to respond to questions or comments that the board discusses. Uh, board members, um, questions for either um, staff or the applicant? Madam Chair, Mike Hain. I have a question for staff. You know, when you go out to the site and you see a 30 plus foot uh, tall ridge between the lake and where they want to build, why is this even a consideration that that could ever flood? It would have to go over the 1168 mark to go back down and fill in the low end where the, the swamp is before it even got to the house. I mean, I'm just puzzled that this would even be a consideration because of that bluff between the lake and their property. I mean, I could totally see if it was on the lake side, yes, but this is on the other side where the water would have to go up and over the bluff, fill up the reserve pond, and then make it up to the house, which would be, as Dennis said, a biblical proportion, uh, the ark going by you if that happened. Okay, Madam Chair, Member Hain, um, I, I certainly understand the comments and I've sympathized with the applicants on this. Uh, 
unfortunately common sense doesn't supersede an ordinance requirement we can't just waive the elevation requirement because it doesn't make sense so that's why we're here tonight is they're applying for a variance from the requirement and i mean i completely agree the water level is not going to overtop the bluff um that being said we still have an ordinance requirement that needs to be met and unfortunately that's why we're here and then one more comment quick uh and i also agree that for them to haul in even fill at the level that they're requesting is going to be ridiculously slope to their driveway and make the site uh less appealing uh, just aesthetically because there's so much fill and then the house sitting on top of that with a huge steep driveway uh, going in. So I guess whoever makes the motion um, to put it at current ground level and go into the, the ground, that additional crawl space dimension um, is where I'm thinking. Um, I have a question for staff. Um, this is Bonnie Moss from the chair. Um, if the Planning Commission were to uh, make a motion to have something reduced beyond what um, the application is written for, would that need to be re-noticed because we're um, making it less restrictive? Um, Madam Chair, the board would have the autonomy to grant a variance of a lesser elevation. We wouldn't need to re-notice that. Um, the notice declared, as you can see, that the construct a low floor crawl space in a new dwelling not meeting the minimum required elevation. It wasn't specific to the elevation that they're requesting. Therefore, the board would have the autonomy to grant something lesser than what is is being requested this evening. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, other board members that have questions or comments? Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, question for staff. Um, the high water level at 1138.47 uh, uh, occurred prior to the uh, installation of the uh, water outlet. Uh, the lake hasn't been above 1135.4 since then. And the water outlet, as we all know, is at 1133. Um, the ordinance doesn't address that situation at all, that uh, conditions have changed so that the high water level that's being considered should change as well. Uh, Madam Chair, Member Gregory, the ordinance doesn't allow for structures such as a, a flood control structure, the installation of a structure such as that to, again, supersede an ordinance requirement. Um, it doesn't recognize that type of facility as being an exemption from meeting the elevation requirement. Okay, thank you. And then second uh, question, I don't know if this is for the applicant or, uh, or staff or whomever, uh, the pond uh, seems to be landlocked. Uh, is there any exit to the pond? I assume that the water in the pond is simply from uh, the flow off the land surrounding it. Um, and and uh, but is there any outlet at all for that pond? As far as I know, there is no outlet for that pond. It does fluctuate. Um, <clears throat> The highest recorded when we had to purchase the uh, um, wetland credits, highest recorded was in tw late 2019. The pond was at a, a elevation of 1127 is the highest that's ever been recorded anyways. Um, and um, it, it fluctuates, it came up for whatever reason that high uh, then, but has significantly went down. And I guess at times there's nothing in it, there's no water. And then obviously there's times it can get high. Um, 
But even with that being said, even at its highest recorded, uh, the 1127 is what we bought the wetland credits for. Um, that is still what eight nine nine feet eight nine feet lower than um, the if if we were granted to go eleven thirty three with the crawl space floor. Um, but no, back to your question. I'm sorry, I ramble. But no, as far as I know, there's no inlet or outlet. It is just everything kind of slopes that way and goes into that pond. So depending on the rain, it goes up and down. And it would, water, water would probably go up and over the road before it would reach the house. Yes, it would go up over the road before it got up to the house up on the hill. Good, thank you. And then Madam Chair, um, I thought of one other thing as, as we went here, just a question for staff. If we were to approve a variance that said that the lowest floor needed to be at 1134 or higher. Uh, would, uh, again, if we're of mind to approve a variance of that nature, uh, would that be an acceptable motion if we get to that point? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Member Gregory, the, the board uh, can pick an arbitrary elevation. Okay. Um, and so, now, that being said, the applicants would have to adhere or be higher than that elevation. So right. keep that in mind if, if you do pick an elevation specific that that the applicant's crawl space would obviously have to meet that or be exceeded. Okay, good, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just one, I just wanna let you guys know I was out there today to measure uh, some, if we were to get it at that 1133, um, uh, the front, okay, the pond half of the house, the slope going down to the pond, for probably half the width of the house, even at 1133, the garage portion and the the whole garage portion and then part of the house pond portion would still we were still going to have to bring in two to three feet of fill just to meet the 1133 which i know it seems crazy but if you know what i mean it's it's pro if you put the house in the thirds chop it in thirds the pond side third of the house we still have to bring elevation up even just to meet the 1133. We will be digging down a little bit towards the hill, of course, but as we go towards the pond, you know, not that we have to bring in fill, we'll probably take from the back side of the house, bring it to the front, level it all out. Um, but I mean, if you request 1134, I'm gonna be grateful for that. I mean, anything, it, you know, it, we'll still, I'm just trying to let you guys know we're still going to have to bring Phil in, even at 11:33. But if you want to bring it to 11:34, that is definitely less Phil than 11:37. So um, I'll let it go as that. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, question for staff: Can you go to the aerial bluff site map, please? And um, I just wanted to better understand what the hashed blue area is, please. Madam Chair, Member DeLong, I believe that blue hashed area depicts the buildable area. Um, <laughs> again, we, we go back and we say it's a very unique lot, and, and it certainly is, because uh, that 200-foot structural setback was surveyed in on that hill, um, and they're about 217 feet from the lake where they currently have their structure staked uh, and I didn't produce this map it was in the notes on the parcel but I believe that that hashed area is indicating the the buildable area meeting the setbacks okay thank you and then um, another question is when the applicant states that they bought wetland credits what does that mean um, Madam Chair, Member DeLong, so the driveway in to the site uh, obviously encountered some of that wetland. So there's a 
bank available that uh, people have wetland credits for sale that could be purchased that would mitigate the impact to the wetland. Okay, thank you. And then uh, another question is, are there construction methods um, for crawl spaces that can handle occasional flooding? Uh, I believe the fill would be detrimental to the pond and the site, um, but I'm thinking like in Florida, they build houses up on stilts or they have concrete blocks or things like that. Are there approved construction methods in the state of Minnesota that can handle crawl spaces that might um, that might have flooding? That's probably a question for staff, maybe. Uh, Madam Chair, Member DeLong, I'm not a building code official, so I, I'm sorry, I don't know that I can answer that question for you tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, but just, uh, I don't know if this is part of your the answer to your question, but you know, the, the sump pump, the, the uh, vapor, vapor barrier, the waterproofing, the waterproofing of the foundation down there, um, and tile, uh, drain tile. Um, so, I mean, if water were to seep into that crawl space, you're gonna have a sump pump pumping it out. Um, you know, there's, there's the, the walls are gonna be waterproofed and, you know, sealed. Um, you know, there are codes to that to prevent that. Um, so I believe, and I've lived in homes with crawl space. I'm on one right now. We have a sump pump. I live on a lake right now and we get flooding and uh, my pump kicks on and I'm actually below the elevation. Uh, part of my basement is in a floodplain. And in the spring, this lake comes up significantly into my yard and I've never had water in the crawl space because the pump and the drain tile and everything uh, does, its job. does its job and then everything, you know, nothing's permanent then the, then the lake goes down and and we're good the rest of the summer i hope that helps a little bit okay thank you for your clarification of that um additional questions before we move on to findings or closing the public hearing okay not hearing any additional questions um do we have a motion to close the public hearing dave gamera i so move right, right we have second. a we have a motion and a second. Is there anyone opposed to closing the public hearing? I'm hearing none. The public hearing is now closed and we will move on to the findings of fact. Um, the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located. Madam Chair, it's R1 zoned area. New construction is allowed in R1 zoned areas. All right, we have a yes for number one. Anyone disagree with yes for one? Madam um, number, Chair, yes, go ahead, along, Joe. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I was just wondering, because this building site is so close to the pond, did the Soil and Water Conservation District um, visit at all or have any recommendations for this building site um, with regards to the, the pond's health. Uh, Madam Chair, Member DeLong, the Soil and Water Office was not sent this application uh, because it was on the back side of the bluff from the lake. It was not sent to them for consideration of the wetland. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have a, ye a yes for number one. Does anyone um, disagree with yes for number one? Hearing none, I'll mark that as unanimous. Number two, um, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls and any related ordinances, yes or no. And Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, um, I think the general purpose and intent of the official controls uh, is to uh, 
have a residence uh, be protected from uh, flooding on a year in year out basis or, or on an occasional basis. Uh, as we've discussed, uh, a, a significant part of our discussion has been the bluff in between the lake and where this residence is going to be placed. Uh, and so I think it is in harmony with the general purposes. All right, we have a yes for number two. Does anyone disagree? Okay, hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number three, the variance will be consistent with a comprehensive plan. Madam Chair, I believe uh, under Lakeshore Living Policy number one, limit the impacts of additional shoreline developments by clustering hose away from the shoreline. Um, I believe because he's building on the opposite side, clearly more than 200 feet away from the lake, that meets this goal. All right, do we, we have a yes or number three? Anyone disagree? Okay, hearing none, we'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner. Madam Chair, Dave Gamrod, I think it's reasonable for him to be concerned about how much fill he would have to bring in to uh, to comply with the ordinance and uh, the hardships that that would cause and it also would cause damage to the steepness of the slope that would be into that pond. So it would be a, uh, I can see where the problem the problem to comply would be greatly enhanced if he had to comply with the ordinance and also there's no danger, I don't think, of, of having a flood from the lake. So I think right. it's reasonable. All right, thank you. We have a yes for number four. Does anyone disagree? Mark that as unanimous, yes. Um, number five, um, the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory uh, is clearly unique to the property. It is a very unique property, actually. And uh, uh, the distance from the lake, the bluff in between, uh, the pond on the other side. Uh, and so uh, I think the landowner has made uh, the, the best use of this property that it can. All right, we have a yes for number five. Um, anyone disagree? Mark that as unanimous, yes. Um, number six, the variance of granted maintains the essential character of the locality. I believe if the house was built uh, appropriately, the character of the area would not change because there are other residential structures around this locality as well. All right, we have a yes or number six. Madam um, Chair, Jill DeLong. Go ahead, Jill. I would say uh, no, it would not maintain the essential character of the locality as I, I think it would negatively impact the health of the wetland. All right, because we have one yes and one no, we'll do a roll call on number six. Um, Dennis? Yes. Um, Dave? Yes. Jacob? Yes. And I am a yes. So for number six, we have um, five yeses when one no. Um, number seven, um, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations. Well, I'm going to say, you know, yes, hauling in a lot of the fill is an economic consideration, but I think, um, you know, it disturbs the appearance of the property by having to elevate the, the house to that great of a height. Um, and I think it probably causes as many problems as it would solve or more so probably. So I'm going to say, um, say yes, that the need for the variance involves more than economic concerns. Um, does anyone dis disagree with yes for number seven? I'm hearing none. I will mic that as a unanimous yes. Um, we are now ready for a motion. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I'd like to make a comment first before I make the motion just to uh, make sense of the motion. Um, if you look at the uh, the map, uh, the pond in the map is at about 1126, 1125. 
somewhere in there. It's a little bit hard to uh, tell exactly. Uh, the applicant is suggesting that the high water level is 1127, uh, just so that there's uh, some room for error. Uh, I am going to suggest in the motion that the low level uh, be 1132 or higher. So basically going from 1127, adding to three feet, and then adding two more feet for the potential judgment error on, on the high water level. So uh, with that explanation, uh, I would make a motion uh, that we approve the applicant's request uh, for a variance to construct a low floor crawl space in a new single family residential uh, dwelling unit at 1,132 feet or higher. That's the floor of that uh, uh, crawl space. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, um, I just have to voice my concern that we um, don't have a soil and water conservation district call on this one, just because I'm concerned that building here and the fill level and everything, um, we don't have any verdict on the stormwater um, mitigation, especially the impacts on the pond and wetland itself. I understand it's on the other side of the bluff of the lake, but the wetland of the pond itself is what I'm worried about. Should we have some kind of condition um, for, and, and I know I'm not a, an expert on this, but I just have concerns on that wetland with the, the building. And Madam Chair, if I may, since I made the motion, uh, just uh, address Member DeLong's a concern. Part of the reason, uh, Jill, that I picked 1132 uh, is based on all of the testimony uh, that would require uh, basically no fill uh, be brought in. Uh, and so the slope to the uh, pond should be able to maintain the existing grade. Uh, so that was incumbent in that 1132 uh, in the uh, uh, motion. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Um, is Madam, there a second to that? Madam Chair, Mike Kane, I will second that. And also note that we have almost two and a half acres of, you know, the impervious surface um, is very minimal. So the wetland is a natural spot for stormwater to run off and uh, percolate back into the ground where it's not gonna harm the big body of water. And I think, uh, there's enough area around there uh, to accommodate any issues with uh, the runoff. Okay, so we have a motion and a second, and I will do roll call um, for the vote. Um, Jill? Yes. Dave? Yes. Mike, or excuse me, um, Jake? Yes. And I am also a yes. Um, so motion carries. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can check with environmental staff um, during regular business hours via the telephone. Um, thank you for being with us this evening. And just one additional comment was I certainly can understand where you wanted to build on this property. While we were on the site um, looking at it, um, we looked to the far end of the pond and there were six deer standing oh. in the middle of the afternoon. There were six deer standing at the far end of the pond. So I'm certainly envious of your view once your house is established there. It's our um, happy Thank place. you very much. It's our happy place. You, I, I am going to shed some tears tonight of joy. Uh, thank you, everyone, so, so much. We don't know how much we appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being with us. Um, our next item on the agenda this evening is to consider a request from Anthony and Angela Tearaway of Richmond, Minnesota from sections 10.2.11a 1a of the Stearns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to construct a deck and a two-story addition less than 100 feet landward of the high water level of a lake classified as recreational development. The said ordinance requires a structural setback of 100 feet from the OHWL of a lake classified recreational development. The affected property is Lot 2, Block 1 of Cedar Lake Park, Section 31, Track 123 North, Range 30 West of Wakefield Township. And the property address is 18374 Cedar Lake, Richmond, Minnesota. And our applicants with us 
Yes. All right, we'll be back to you in just a couple minutes. Um, I'd like to do roll call on who was able to visit the site. Um, Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes, and I did speak with the applicant. Um, they mentioned that the Soil and Water Conservation District had talked to them about grasses on the shore, and they were good with that. Okay, and um, Mike? Yes, and I also spoke with both applicants. Um, Dave? Yes, I spoke with the applicants also. Um, Jake? Yep. And I was there as well. And just for um, board members to keep in mind that there are two items on this request. Um, so during the process, um, start thinking whether we want to do one findings um, for both items or doing them separately. Uh, so if we will now go to staff for an overview of this application. Uh, the applicants own lot two block one of Cedar Island Park which was platted in 1983. Uh, they purchased this property in April of 2006. Uh, the property is in an R1 zoning district and the tract is approximately 40,173 square feet or 0.92 acres. This house was constructed with a valid permit in 1990 and the detached garage was authorized under a conditional use permit in 1994. Uh, per uh, aerial photo review, we did discover a deck on the east side of the home that was constructed sometime between 2010 and 2015 without a valid permit. Uh, this deck does meet all the required setbacks. The applicants are proposing to construct a 12 by 16 deck and a 20 by 20 two-story living addition on the lake side of the of their existing dwelling. The deck would be set back approximately 84 feet in a two-story addition of 76 feet from Cedar Island Lake. Uh, we cannot use a building line uh, for this proposal because the tract to the west of the property uh, does not have a principal structure on it. This property is in the shoreland overlay of Cedar Island Lake, which is a recreational development lake. A, a portion of the, the property frontage is in the 100 year flood, but the proposed additions are not. And Cedar Island is on the impaired waters list for mercury and fish. The existing subsurface sewage treatment system is sized for three bedrooms and that was certified compliant this past March, a um, month ago today. The current impervious lot coverage is 15% and the, the proposed uh, would be 16%. We do have the recommended mitigation options in your packet. Uh, an alternative to this request would be to construct an addition on the west side of the house towards a detached garage. And the variance does have the potential to impact a future building line. Wakefield Township, the city of Cold Spring, uh, DNR, Sock River Watershed District, Chain of Lakes Association, and owners within 500 feet have been notified of this request. Uh, just one recommended condition if the request are denied, we would ask that uh, the deck on the east side of the house be permitted after the fact by May 31st of this year. I do not have any correspondence for this request, so it's all yours, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. And if we can do roll call on who was able to visit the site. Um, Dennis? We already did. Oh, we did that. Excuse me. It's getting late in the evening. All right. Um, then let's go ahead and have the applicant share with us um, their thoughts. So it's Tony and Angie Terraway, and we are looking to make our house of 18374 Cedar Lane, Richmond, Minnesota. About a mile south of Dennis's place. Ah. 
Tony and Angie Tearaway, and we are looking to make our lake home a lifetime home uh, for our kids to come back to after they graduate and to make it more comfortable living in family space. Um, is the reason for the addition towards the lake request. We've met with uh, soil and water with Greg Berg, went over a mitigation plan for the lakeshore. Uh, we've been down to native landscapes for a solution and estimates on uh, shoreline management. We're active members with the Sock River Chain of Lakes. We have uh, a very mature tree bank on the shoreline as well as all natural stone the entire length of our uh, lot line. Um, it'll be minimal impervious surface increase, only 1% because of the mountain patio that will be removed. Uh, another benefit of going towards the lake instead of towards the side garage is we will maintain some of the lake views from the front yard that we currently enjoy. The deck has come up for uh, discussion and I see that it's noted in the packet. Uh, back when it came into construction, worked with Mr. Elroy Tice, the Wakefield Township supervisor, our uh, building supervisor. And because we did not put permanent footings in the ground, we can pick that deck up and move it. Uh, one of the reasons was the potential to add out that side of the house someday in the future. So if I wanted to, I could pick that deck up and move it to any place, anywhere. It's set on a couple timbers, uh, small enough that a long forklift would be able to move it. So we thought we are under a all right uh, situation with that. But again, if we have to follow up with some permitting, permitting on that, we can do so. Uh, we look forward to working with you and answering any questions we can. And uh, lastly, I thank you all for your service to the public as re review board members. All right, thank you. All right, now if we have um, questions or comments from board members for either staff or the applicant. Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, questions for the applicant or a question for the applicant. Uh, Greg Berg noted a tile that uh, goes from the gutters and then directly into the lake. Uh, as par part of the water mitigation plan, do you plan to do anything uh, with that tile system? Uh, not within the discussions or plans that Greg proposed. Um, we are in a heavy clay area here and uh, he did not come up with a rain garden situation. Uh, it does currently drain out at the edge of the bluff or the edge of the lake bank. And at this time, no, we don't have a plan to change that. We, we can revisit that with soil and water if we have to. Yeah, we would definitely be open to suggestions. Um, we just weren't really sure what to do with it either. Um, that was like the, just the best location because of how heavily clay our soil is. Good. Thank you. Okay, other questions? Madam Chair, Dave Camrod. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, with the adding of the vegetative area along the lake, uh, would the runoff water uh, be, could that be altered so that it would have to run through the, the new vegetated uh, areas or uh, so that it would get some treatment before it went into the woods? Yes, guys. Dave, are you asking us that or staff? Well, I would ask both of you that, you know, <laughs> if that, I guess I would ask you that more than uh, staff because you you live there and see right. you know where it runs and you know. Uh, so absolutely, the runoff in the roof and the rainwater could be filtered or set up so that it can go down the bank. The existing drain tile, I it's below pretty much the whole level of the yard uh, okay. where it comes okay. out around the house. It comes out under the back patio and is trenched probably a good four or five feet down and then comes out midpoint of the bank to the rock ledge of the lake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I think my only concern would be if the runoff from the, the gutters, if it would cause erosion issues just because of how quickly it runs, you know, comes out. But if there was a way we could slow that 
flow through the through the plantings. I I I, I love that idea. Okay. Madam Chair. Go ahead, oh, Dennis. Sorry, uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory. A question for staff. Uh, normally, the mitigation plans uh, suggest 25 feet landward, and for uh, some reason, this one suggests 30 feet landward. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, understanding why there is a difference between the normal and this one? Uh, Madam Chair, Member Gregory, uh, I don't, I can't say this with 100% certainty, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the steepness of the slope and just extending that up to where the, you know, where the slope breaks. To the top. Okay. I hope it's okay if I interject. But yep, when, go ahead. Um, when when Mr. Berg was out here too, he we kind of looked at where like the tree line starts, and we talked about putting matching the planting with, as with the tree line. And I believe that was at that thirty foot mark. He kind of asked us where we thought that would you know be most aesthetically pleasing as well. So I'm wondering if maybe that's where that number came from. I'm not sure. <laughs> And then okay. Greg also gave us the pathway down to the lake, the stairway. He 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 measured that width as well. And I, I don't know if there's a calculation, but I know that was part of the discussion that day too. Wonderful. Thank you for that uh, extra context. Appreciate it. Okay, additional questions or comments from the board? Or are we ready to close the public hearing? My cane, so move. Okay, second. we have a motion to close. Second, Dennis. And a second um, by Dennis. Is there anyone opposed to closing the public hearing from the board? Okay, hearing none, the public hearing is now closed and we will um, go on to findings. Uh, do the board, does the board wish to um, act? have one set of findings for the addition and the deck um, together or do them separately? Mike Kane, um, I would be in favor of both together is fine. Jill DeLong, I also think both together would be fine. And Dennis and I concur. Jake, I agree. All right, sounds Jake. like so far the majority has said yes, so we'll go with that. Um, so we will have one set findings of fact for the um, requested variance to construct a deck and a two-story addition less than 100 feet landward of the OHWL of a late classified recreational development. Um, number one, the proposed use is allowed in the zoning district in which the subject property is located, yes or no? Madam Chair, it's R1 zone district um, additions and decks are allowed in the R1 zone district. All right, we have a yes for number one. Does anyone disagree? I'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number two, the variance will be in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the official controls and any related ordinances, yes or no. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, um, I think in general, the uh, purposes and intent of the official controls is to protect the uh, natural resources. Um, the applicants, uh, along with Greg Berg's assistance, uh, have come up with a plan to uh, to mitigate uh, stormwater runoff. Uh, so actually, I think they're improving uh, their lot uh, compared to its current condition. So I do think it is in harmony with the uh, general purposes. All right, so we have a yes for number two. Does anyone disagree with that? Okay, hearing none, um, I'll mark that as unanimous, yes. Number three, the variance will be consistent with the comprehensive plan, yes or no? 
Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, Lakeshore Living Policies number two, encourage shoreland protection and restoration methods, such as vegetative buffers. Uh, the applicants have agreed to uh, install those um, and, uh, and, and uh, the impervious surface is only increasing by 1%. Uh, so they're also uh, in, in some ways uh, point number three as well. All right. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, I'm also a yes, and I want to include um, number six, where we're expanding mitigation requirements for projects requesting to vary from lake setbacks. Um, so I, I want to state that one specifically because it is um, what we're varying from the lake setback. All right, thank you. So we have two yeses for number three. Um, anyone disagree with yes for number three? Hearing none, I'll mark that unanimous yes. Number four, the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner. Madam Chair, Mike Kane, um, I believe as the owners say it, this is a forever home and they want to uh, prepare the home for their future uses and um, make it more livable for their family. So I believe that is. All right, so we have a yes for number four. Um, anyone disagree with that? Okay, hearing none, we'll mark it as unanimous, yes. Um, number five, the plight of the landowner is due to the circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Madam Chair, I believe the house was in its current position when they bought it and it makes the most sense uh, to build and construct the deck where they are proposing versus alongside the house uh, where it would obstruct views from the street uh, to the lake as well. All right, we have a yes for number five. Anyone disagree? All right, number six. Um, the variance of granted maintains the essential character of the locality. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, I don't think the uh, uh, variance if approved will change the essential character of the locality. All right, we have a yes for number six. Anyone disagree? Okay, we'll unanim mark that unanimous yes. Number seven, the need for the variance involves more than economic considerations, yes or no? Madam Chair, Dave Gamrod, I believe that uh, economics weren't discussed and uh, I applaud uh, the conservation part of this plan for the, the betterment of the lake. Okay, so we have a yes for seven. Anyone disagree? All right, so we are now ready for a motion. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, uh, I would make a motion that we approve the applicant's request for a variance uh, to construct a deck 84 feet landward and a two-story addition 76 feet landward of the ordinary high water level uh, with uh, two conditions. Uh, condition number one uh, is that the applicants uh, would implement uh, the water mitigation plan as suggested by Greg Berg uh, in our packet, which I, uh, I would guess that the applicants have in their possession as well. Uh, and the second condition is uh, that they, um, and I know this is kind of general, but that they would work with Greg Berg on the tile uh, and come up with an acceptable solution um, you know, to that tile based off of Greg's Ber Greg Berg's further recommendations. Mr. Gregory, uh, could we also add in there that they obtain the necessary permits for the unpermitted deck as well? Yes, uh, good point, uh, thank you. And so I add that to my motion. All right, so we have a motion to approve with three conditions. Um, Mike and Hainel, then, second that. And a second by Mike. All right, we'll do roll call for the remainder of the board, Jill. Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. 
And I'm also a yay. yes. So your request has been approved. Um, if you have any more questions about it, um, you can talk to environmental staff um, during regular business hours via telephone. Um, and we thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Our last item on the agenda for this evening is to consider a request from Carla Wensman, Wensman Contractors, LLC, Avon, on behalf of Patterson Lake Homes, LLC, Toluca Lake, California, from sections 10.2.11a, 1a, and 2, a, and number 2, of the Stearns County Land Use and Zoning Ordinance 439 to construct an addition onto an existing legal non-conforming principal structure less than 100 feet from landward of the Big Watab Lake classified as recreational development and ahead of the established building line. The said ordinance requires structures be placed a minimum of 100 feet landward of a lake classified as recreational development or at or behind the established building line. In addition, from section 6.2.1p of the Stearns County Subsurface Sewage Treatment System Ordinance 422 to construct the said addition less than 20 feet from a soil treatment area. The said ordinance requires structures to be set back 20 feet from a soil treatment area. The affected property is Lot 6 and a portion of Lot 7 of Gemmerdale Shores, um, section 9, track 124 North, range 30 west of Collegeville Township. The property address is 30246 Lilac Road, St. Joe, Minnesota. And are our applicants um, with us this evening? We are. This is Greg Wensman. All right, thank you. And um, is there also a Christopher Spoon? Yes, I'm the owner of the property. I'm also here. Okay, all right, thank you. And we'll Great. be back to you in just a couple minutes. All right, we'll do um, roll call um, for those who visited the property. Um, Dennis? Yes. Jill? Yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. And I am also a yes. And um, just to keep in mind that we will do two findings of fact on this one. Um, one would be to leave as constructed the illegal deck that's currently on the location. And the other one would be to the construction of, um, or the new construction uh, that is ahead of the established building line and less than 20 feet from the soil um, treatment area. So there will be two findings of fact. One will be a regular findings of fact, and one would be an after the fact findings. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. If, if I could interject. Uh, if the board would be inclined to grant the variance, I don't believe you need to do the after the fact findings for the deck. Oh, all right. I'm just looking at what was given me here. So, all right, thank you. That would only be in the case of denial. Okay, if it's denied, we need to do the second one. All right, thank you Correct. for that clarification. Um, so, okay, so. All right, so if um, staff could give us their overview of this application. Certainly, the subject property is Lot 6 and the southwest part of Lot 7 of Jen Martel Shores which was platted in 1960 prior to any official controls. Uh, per the, per the sur submitted certificate of survey, this tract is 12,646 square feet. Uh, the home was originally constructed as a two bedroom dwelling in 1961, according to our county assessor's records. The Previous owners obtained a construction site permit in 2006 to construct a 24 by 24 dwelling addition, which included the addition of two bedrooms that weren't reflected on the permit application, which therefore made it a four bedroom dwelling. Uh, current owners purchased the property on August 
27th of 2014. They did install a new septic system in 2017 to accommodate the four-bedroom dwelling. Obviously, they had to upsize that system. Uh, they obtained a construction site permit in February of 2020 to construct additions on the home. They now would like to convert the existing 14 by 20 deck to a six by 14 covered deck and the remainder 14 by 14 would be a screen porch. For our county assessor's records, that deck was constructed in the year 2000. There is no permit on file for the deck. The deck is ahead of the established building line, 89.4 feet landward of Big Wattab Lake, and then also 12 feet from the soil treatment area that was put in in 2017. This property is in an R1 zoning district on Big Wattab Lake, which is a rec development lake. Uh, there is no floodplain on the property. And the parcel is also located in Avon Hills Natural Resource Area. Uh, as I mentioned, the system was installed new in 2017. Uh, there are no known problems, and so is exempt from certification because it's less than five years old. But there are recommended mitigation options by the SWCD in your packets. Uh, per the submitted certificate of survey, the lot coverage is 24.4%, and this request would not increase that coverage. Uh, your decision tonight does have the potential to impact future building line for uh, adjacent lots. One alternative to the request would be to remove the unpermitted deck and use the space as an at-grade patio. Uh, again, if the variance is denied, a motion could be considered by the board to allow the existing deck to remain in its location. Of course, an after-the-fact permit would need to be obtained. Collegeville Township, Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, Big Wattap Lake, and owners within 500 feet have been notified of the request. And um, if their request is denied, but the deck is allowed to remain, uh, we would ask, the department would ask that a permit would be obtained by June 15th of 2021. I do not have any correspondence regarding this request. Nothing written. I, I did field two phone calls, but no written correspondence. All right. Thank you. If we can now go to the applicants and um, have them share with us their thoughts. Madam Chair, this is Greg Wensman. Um, address 31126, 163rd Avenue. And if I could ask to turn it over to the property owner, Chris Spoon. And then um, when Chris is finished, if I could, um, if I could have a chance. Sure, that would be fine. Um, Hi, Mr. Spoon, go ahead. Yeah, Madam Chair and Board, thank you so much. Just a little bit about our attachment to the property. Um, we're not from uh, we're not from Minnesota, but we have a relationship that extends over 25 years. I have a brother Mark that lives in um, Albany with uh, his wife Jane. They have uh, four nieces and nephews, three of which are married and have kids. So we have been coming back here for close to 25 years and really consider this uh, our second home. I'm currently at 6154 North 29th Street in Phoenix, Arizona which is my residence and where I work. Um, so in addition to our family, we've got incredible neighbors uh, um, uh, next door, Kevin, Sue, Dave, and Mary, who we've developed some very good relationships with. Um, over the past seven years, uh, we believe we've demonstrated um, great respect for the property and uh, considered a privilege to live on the lake. We think we've taken extra precaution to protect and preserve the natural habitat of the lake and uh, and we've worked hard to be great neighbors in our local community. As Annie and I uh, grow older, uh, we know our lives will uh, will be more and more around the lake. We have one daughter, uh, Mary. Um, we're both from large families. Our daughter has 43 nieces and nephews. It's our desire to have the home um, you know, uh, in incredibly comfortable for us and for our daughter and our extended family. 
Um, as mentioned, we put a new septic on um, a, a few years back to bring things up to code. This past year with Greg and Carla's um, work, we did a remodel, um, a modest remodel to the existing structure to make it more functional and homey. Uh, it's our intent to finalize the vision for the property. Uh, we hope that you give uh, consideration to our request. With that, I'll turn it over to Greg. Okay, go ahead, Greg. Thank you. Um, Greg Wensman here. Um, I would just like to add in, um, the, unfortunately, the previous building owners um, left a little bit of a, a mess for, for us to come and find and, and try to clean up. I think I think the Spoons have done a, a good start on it by upgrading the septic system to accommodate the four bedrooms. Um, and just a little bit about the non-permitted deck. Um, we do a fair amount of lake property work, so we're we're somewhat familiar with the zoning ordinances. And um, when we did our research on this, uh, with the information available to us, um, we weren't able to determine that the deck was non-permitted, um, or we would have taken a different approach to this process than to David's um, hard work in the assessor's office, he found that it is a non-permitted, um, as, he, as he stated earlier. So I just wanted to make a point of that. Um, something else I'd, I'd like to mention in this whole process is, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that all the surrounding counties um, that have shoreline overlay district take the, uh, the storm water or the overland water pretty serious. And in this case, I've actually looked at it pretty hard to find some alternative methods to take that overland water away from the lake, which we've done in previous projects. And unfortunately, in this case, due to the elevation of the township road and the elevation of the culverts um, in that neighborhood, um, I just think it would be very counterproductive in this case. Um, I'd actually be afraid of creating problems for some of the neighbor neighboring landowners. Um, <clears throat> so unfortunately in this case, I, I wouldn't recommend diverting um, the storm water to the, the lilac, the township road, which leaves it still going more in a direct route towards the lake. Um, the other piece that I'd like to talk about though, is it's the terrain in the backyard in the three or four house area there on a little bit of a point. It's kind of unique in that um, where uh, the spawn's yard is, where that buffer is uh, being suggested to be installed. And even as as Greg, um, Greg Berg is suggesting, it would serve a purpose for the aesthetics to have the buffer, but it really wouldn't serve a purpose for um, uh, filtering the water and which, which we can completely understand the, the rationale for that. But on that same note, I, I want to point out, and if whoever is running these images can go back to the aerial photo of, uh, of this property and zoom out so that it shows the lake. Um, one thing I want to point out is the spawns property is actually kind of on a point. And with in this case, with a buffer, um, you know, if there's any amount of height, I'm I'm just concerned it's going to really limit the uh, the sight lines from the two properties to the east. Um, they're back in a little bit of a bay, and I guess I'd just ask the board to take that into consideration um, in this process. So that's it for me. Okay, thank you. And if the board has questions, um, we might be back to you or to the owner as well. Um, so if we have um, questions or comments from board. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, um, just a question. So it sounds like the new septic system was built in 2017. So does that mean that in 2017 they built that uh, this, that drain field around the existing deck, or was that where the previous septic system was? Uh, David, do you want me to respond, or would you rather? Does the applicant know? 
Uh, yes, we do. The okay. existing, the original septic system, or I should say the previous septic system was in that same general area because that's the only piece of the property that will allow it. And so in 2017, it required, um, I believe it's either considered a class three or class four drain field and tank system um, that required it to be at that elevation. Um, and so, yes, the, the current drain field is pretty much built right around that existing patio. Madam Chair, Member DeLong, I, I guess I can add a little bit to that. So, yeah, what happened here was um, the old drain field was removed and then the the area was excavated out and it was replaced with clean wash sand. And this is a type 4 system because there's pre-treatment. There's a UV light um, in the lift tank that helps with the treatment because... They couldn't get adequate sizing of the drain field just because of setbacks and things. Um, so it, it's a unique septic system in that there's a pretreatment device in there that helps accommodate the sizing uh, that's needed. Okay, thank, thank you. you. It was just a unique situation I hadn't seen before and the retaining wall around it between the deck and the drain field looked like it was older so I wasn't I wasn't sure how what age that whole thing was <laughs> um, Ma Madam Chair Dennis Gregory just to follow up to Jill's question uh, I found it interesting that the uh, uh, sewer uh, or sewage permit called that a patio uh, versus a deck. And so I think they thought it was far enough away. And so uh, I need a reminder. I know what I think a patio is and what a deck is. Um, and I would, because this is ground level, I'm kind of thinking it's much more of a patio than a deck. Uh, what, what is the definition of each? Uh, Madam, Chair, Member Gregory, if the surface of the structure is more than a foot from natural grade, it's considered a deck. If it's within 12 inches of grade, it would be considered a patio. Um, I, I have a belief that at some point in time that it was just a patio. And, and in fact, we do have uh, information from our assessor's office that that's indeed what was there at one point in the in the late 90s um, and so the deck came along uh, well again according to their records 2000 without a permit and if you went on that east property boundary you could see that 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 deck is uh, elevated above the ground level and I'm thinking when the septic inspector was there he was just looking at that as being the natural grade. He didn't realize that the deck was elevated on posts underneath. And therefore that's why he deemed it a patio on his inspection report. So not to belabor it, but the reason, I mean, as I walk back there, you basically walk straight onto it. You don't have to lift your foot up um, other than the retaining wall. Uh, and so because of the retaining wall, it makes it, a, I mean, I, I get there's supports underneath, but it's at ground level. Uh, so it, it's the retaining wall that makes it a deck? Is that the, um, what you're saying? Well, if I can address that, you know, I was, if you walked on the side of the house, right, um, by this, where that hand is right now, <laughs> You know, that, that's all open underneath there. That retaining wall is probably, I don't know, four feet high or three feet Shall high. Shall go to that next picture? And, and there's also um, five steps. There's yeah, that picture. Is, it's all open space underneath that deck. There should be. It's The deck isn't right on that's ground it? level. Oh, I got it here. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Uh, uh, Bonnie, I understand that. The anyway, I I don't want to belabor it much. It, it just the vast majority of that deck or patio is at ground level. Uh, I get on that one side, it's not so okay. I it it, it is confusing to me 
uh, it it becomes a deck for just that reason. But. Okay. Um, I have one more question in regard to that deck. Um, if you look at underneath the deck, there's some pipes under there that looks like it's for drainage. Is that like for the sub pump, or what's draining out of there underneath the deck? I, I believe those are um, old uh, sump pump for the basement, which now has been routed um, alongside of the garage. Okay, so the, there would no longer be something draining out from underneath the deck. Correct. All right, thank you. I don't know why that's not in there. Uh, Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory. Unless they uh, stuck when it was scanned. Uh, Dennis Gregory, a question on the stormwater mitigation plan. Um, as uh, Greg indicated, uh, you know, it's not going to get the water treatment. Um, I guess I was a little bit, again, confused why the water from the gutters wouldn't be routed to a rain garden, which would then ultimately be able to flow through that uh, buffer area. Greg here. Um, I can address that question. Uh, the problem we're having is we just don't have the, the space to do it. And with the terrain um, between the, the this lot and the lots alongside of it, um, to be able to direct and put the water where we want it. Like I said, on previous projects, we're usually able to come up with a practical solution to manage the, uh, the storm water and and um, this one is is very intricate and unique. Um, I, I wish there would be a logical solution. I mean, to me, the most practical is always to go out to um, the public road and route it around through the ditches. And I'm just concerned in this case with the elevations and all the surrounding driveways that um, that option is gonna create some conflict. Okay, thank you. Um, I are you muted? I'm so, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, Dave Matt Environmental Services. Um, I think what we're looking at here is elevation challenges from the house to the lake and lack of av available space to to put anything. Um, and we have the sewage treatment system between the house and deck and the lake, uh, so there just really isn't a good spot anywhere on the property. It's pretty full to be able to to implement many BMPs other than a, a buffer at the lake to try and filtrate some things. And, and um, one of my concerns when visiting the property was adding an additional addition with additional roof space. And right now the the drainage from the house from the um, from the gutters seems to be draining um, off the side of the house right onto the neighboring property. And are we going to be adding even more um, rainwater running directly onto the neighbor's property? Um, because from that side of that house, the the topography you know significantly dipped when it got to the neighbor's property. I just have concerns about us permitting that or doing that. If Matt, the builder or the um, owner want to comment on that. Uh, Madam Chair, Greg Wensman, the builder here. Um, yes, I completely understand what you're talking about. And if I can address it in two pieces, um, one of the um, recommendations that we do have um, for the yellow cabin to the east because of topography um, would be um, an above ground rain barrel system to slow the uh, to slow the roof water down. Um, again, I mean, I even looked at as far as is underground piping it the water towards um, Lilac Road, and putting the water up against the road is, 
I just, like I said earlier, it's going to create a conflict. And then maybe to, to add a second um, answer, you know, putting a, a roof over a screen porch. I mean, we already have a deck there, so it's, it's considered impervious. And so we're actually not in, we're not increasing the impervious on the site by adding this roof system. And maybe I'm misunderstanding, but when I looked at the deck, you know, there's ways that the water can run through the cracks in the deck and kind of be dispersed. But when you put a roof on, and then if you put um, rain gutters on, it's all directed, you know, in a smaller area. You know, all the water is basically directed in a smaller area and aimed right at the neighbor's property. Um, yeah, I can, I can understand your, your questions or your concerns. Um, you know, it, it, if it does go through the deck, it's, it, it does have a chance to go down. Um, <clears throat> I know on a heavy rain, you know, it won't, that heavy soil out there won't take it and it will run over to the neighbors. Um, you know, I propose, you know, we could still direct the water through gutters and downspouts. You know, we could direct it actually the other direction, um, which would be west toward the Borgerts. Um, there is a little bit of a, a ravine between the two parcels in that area. So at least that neighbor's not having to accept all the water. Um, and we're keeping it off the drain field, which would be another concern of mine. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, other board members, questions, concerns? Uh, Dennis Gregory, you know, my concerns, I think, are uh, somewhat aligned, uh, Bonnie, with yours. Um, I would like to see a better water mitigation plan. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm so used to Greg Berg's uh, recommendations being solid with with uh, with answers here, and uh, you know, Greg Wensman is uh, indicating that he's looked at it from a number of standpoints as well. Uh, but there really should be a better uh, approach here than saying, uh, you know, shoulders shrugged, and uh, it's going to go up to the neighboring properties and uh, and impact them. And there's not much we can do. And even if we put a buffer by the lake, uh, the water's not going to be going through that. Um, you know, I, I think there's an opportunity to correct the situation here, um, you know, along with the, with a potential variance. And so, um, I would just suggest, uh, potentially that, uh, that we would table this item until our next meeting, uh, so that, uh, Greg Wensman and Greg Berg can come up with a better plan. And I would I agree with that because, you know, my biggest concerns here are that we're directing wa even more water onto the neighbor's property and then all of a sudden we're causing a problem for the neighbor that maybe the neighbor doesn't foresee right now, but it's very potential. I would also concur with that. Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. Dave. I would have a question for staff. Uh, is this uh, system kind of considered a mound system and they kind of filled the dirt in between the mound system and the house that probably that deck at one time was up, up from the normal uh, soil thing. Was this re-excavated to bring, bring it up so that it didn't look like a mound? Uh Madam Chair, Member Gamrat, this is actually a pressure bed system. Um, it's kind of enclosed by the surrounding retaining wall uh, and elevation. So it, it's not actually a mound system. It is a pressurized bed that's, that has a lift tank that, that pressurizes the, 
effluent up into the laterals in the bed. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, are there any more questions um, from board members? Now, there has been a suggestion to um, to table waiting for a more detailed um, water management plan. Um, what are people's thoughts on that? Is that the direction the board would like to go, or would they like us to um, move ahead? Madam Chair, Jill DeLong. That would be up. Go ahead, Jill. I'd be willing to also uh, table it um, so that we can get a better plan. All right. If we could, I've heard a couple people suggest that we table it. Um, what are the owner and um, contractor's thoughts on tabling? Yeah, Madam Chair, Madam Chair and Board, I think that's a fair, um, a fair decision. I think we'll we'll go back and take a look at what other options that are uh, acceptable. Do we have a time frame in which that needs to be done? Well, I'll refer that question to staff. Okay. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, just just to be clear, it would be actually be a continuation if it's going to be the next meeting. Uh, not a tabling. Yeah, okay. a, a, a continuation is what I meant. Sorry, I used the wrong word. Okay. Nope. All right, if staff could maybe comment on the feasibility of Greg being able to work with them and getting a better plan together in the next month's time, or do we need to leave it more open-ended than that? Well, I, I guess the, is this the board's wishes for the applicant's uh, owner to work with soil and water or do they want the uh, the applicant owners to come up with their own plan or, or in conjunction with, I, I'm not certain what direction you want to take that. Madam Chair, uh, this is the owner. It, I think it, if we can collaborate that way, um, you know, there's a, you know, a synergy between the groups to come up with a collective solution that's acceptable. I think that would be the preferred method. Madam Chair, Jill DeLong, in a previous uh, variance application tonight, they did, one of the contingencies was to have an approved stormwater, engineered stormwater plan. Is that what we're looking for here is an approved engineered stormwater plan? Or are we just looking for them to have a better plan? I guess, do we need an official approved engineered stormwater plan? I'm, I'm thinking through uh, that um, suggestion, Jill, uh, as far as my original suggestion to continue. Uh, I guess I was hoping that Greg Wensman would, uh, working with whoever he's going to work with, would propose a plan. Uh, Greg Berg would review that plan. Uh, and if both of them found the plan, along with the uh, applicant, to be acceptable, uh, that we could move forward. Whether that is an engineered plan or a non-engineered plan, I wasn't, uh, I don't know that I, I was uh, particular in my thought process that it had to be engineered. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was the terminology we were looking for, because it sounds like we were trying to aim for some kind of terminology here. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, thank you. And I um, think it'd be important for us to, um, you know, be a, kind of specific about our concerns to make sure that they address those in in their plan. Um, one of my one of my major concerns is the um, runoff from the from the gutters going directly onto the neighbor's property. Um, maybe other board members can voice their concerns that would need to be addressed in a plan. Madam Chair, Dave Gamrad. I think that this plan, it could be this lot is so unique that it maybe even involves his neighbor that uh, the whole thing should be looked at as a group type situation where what is a plan that betters the lake instead of uh, we can't do anything and then uh, the lake suffers. So and I, I think, think we're it, it should be looked at. 
I agree that it, the best plan would be if it were continued, if it contained input from the neighbors, but I don't know that we, you know, we're not able to en enforce that to control the, what the neighbors w are willing to do. But if, but if the water runs onto his neighbors naturally, then it's a neighborhood problem and not just one owner's problem too. So. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, that's my Madam, comment. Madam Chair, Dennis Gregory, I, I would be hesitant to to have us uh, direct, you know, like 100% of the water would need to be taken care of or 80% or 50%. Um, you know, what we've heard tonight uh, is that there are definite design issues on this uh, particular property. Uh, I guess, again, that's why I was hoping that uh, both Greg Wensman uh, and then ultimately uh, working with the owner and working with uh, Greg Berg uh, could provide a plan. If they're all in agreement, I think there's a high likelihood that, uh, you know, that will look favorably on that plan as well. And so rather than giving a specific direction, basically giving them general direction to uh, to come back with a better plan than what they have now. I would concur with that as well. I would. I also would think that would be a good direction. I agree. So, M Madam Chair, uh, just to move it forward, uh, I would make a motion that we continue uh, this variance request uh, you know, um, and to uh, come back uh, at the next available meeting after a plan has been developed. Uh, that plan would be the responsibility of the uh, applicant and Greg Wensman, the contractor, uh, working in conjunction with, uh, you know, Soil and Water and Greg Berg um, to, uh, to present that plan to the board at that next available meeting. All right, then I have a question for staff. Is that an appropriate way? Can we do a continuance um, without a specific date? Madam Chair, uh, you can continue it to the next meeting. But right. I think his statement was to continue it once they developed a plan that they both agreed on, then it would come up at the the meeting, most um, current meeting after that. Um, can we do that or do we need to put a specific date to it? Well, I guess you you, you could say for the May meeting, um, that sure. it's a short time frame. Adam uh, Chair. I'm um, sorry. Someone's yeah. asked, someone's asked Chair, to this speak. Is, yeah, this is the owner. In, okay, in go ahead. In the spirit of not rushing it, I would uh, I would ask that we have a little latitude and time so we do a careful and thorough you know solution here and we're not rushed. So while we try and be available at the next board meeting, I I wouldn't want to rush something. You know, we're we're in no hurry to get it done. We're more in a hurry to get it done right. So so that would be my would be my main point. Okay. Okay. All right, I've been advised by staff that um, one method for us to accomplish that would be for us to table it and then they could come back and tell the board um, whenever they're ready to have it um, on to the next meeting. Um, you could check with staff what the deadline for getting it onto the next agenda is. And um, Monday. Oh, Monday would be the deadline for getting it on the May's agenda. Um, so um, if we table it, then the timeline is open for the um, applicant to come back when they feel it's possible. Madam, um, Madam, Chair, Madam <laughs> Chair, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm on a merry-go-round, but uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, I would be happy to amend my motion instead of a continuation uh, to table uh, the request. Okay, and before we vote on that. I just want to get the applicant's response or the owner's response on tabling rather than continuing. In the spirit of time, Madam Chair, I, I think that's a brilliant move. All right. If it's tabled that way, if you by Monday think that you're going to be ready for the May meeting, 
Um, you can call the office and let them know to get it on the agenda. And if not, then you would need to um, let them know when in the future you'd be able to do that. Now, if you're conferring with um, Greg Berg and trying to put a plan together, I can about guarantee you that's probably not going to happen by Monday. But if you talk to Greg, he might be able to give you an idea of, you know, what that timeline might look like. Understood. Okay, so um, we have a motion on the floor to table this item. Um, do we have a second? Madam Chair, Mike Kane, I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second to table this item um, until further notice. Um, I'll do a, let's see, it was Dennis. The motion was made by, was it Dennis? Yes. And the second by Mike. All right. Then I'll call it roll call. Jill? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jake? Yes. And I am also a yes. Um, so your app, your request has been tabled at this time. And as I indicated, um, it will be your responsibility then to ca um, contact Environmental Services um, when you want it back on the next agenda. Madam Chair and Board, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, does staff have anything else they need us to discuss this evening? Um, what does our meeting for May look like? Ma Madam Chair, I believe there's there's three feedlot um, and potentially three others at this point. Okay, so about six at this point until Monday. <laughs> yeah, Monday, deadline day, things happen. All right, thank you. Um, so do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Dave Gamrod, I so move. Second? So move. And um, all in favor, aye? Aye. 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 Okay, have, have a good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you.